I very much appreciated Catherine's, Catherine Riley's testimony a couple of weeks ago when she revealed how both sides of her brain from time to time worked in opposition to one another, which made life interesting on most days, but at the same time confronted her with a crisis of faith. On the one hand, she declared herself to be a skeptic, a person in need of empirical proof. On the other hand, she's an artist, and her art has served as a doorway to fling open to experience the mystery. And then her skeptic side takes a back seat. And I suspect at some point she's describing all of us. We are all, after all, products of the Enlightenment, products of a philosophy that seeks proof and understanding and data. Yet who wants to spend their life living in the fact? when reality is so much more complex than the facts would suggest. And so as we begin this Lenten journey, considering healing in all of its dimensions, I wonder what brain is going to kick in. I can well recall, shortly after my mother was diagnosed as being terminal, my brother suggesting that we call together the elders of the church to pray and to lay hands on her. I flinched. You get that, don't you? We are familiar with the healing ministry of Jesus on the one hand, but on the other, we have too much history of faithful people who have prayed for years to be healed only to be met with silence. Perhaps the disease getting worse, and finally taking their life. You are familiar with those stories. And we try to reconcile them in different ways. But it does beg the question, why do we bother praying for healing? Jennifer Bartlett, a minister, admits to wrestling with these same things, but confesses that at a certain point, she decided that she had to get out of that side of her brain, and she had to just open herself up to the possibilities and to the mystery, and she confesses that she's been anointing things in secret. She writes, The first time my beloved cat was ill with something the vet couldn't diagnose or treat, in an act of desperation, I dipped my fingers into the olive oil from the pantry and made a sign of the cross between his eyes. May you be well. May you be made well, I whispered. The first time, she continues, I went to see my folks after my dad's Parkinson's diagnosis. I crept around his bedroom 
while he was out one day. Cowboy that he is, he would never have let me rub oil on his forehead. So I made tiny oily crosses on his pillow, his work boots, his wallet. And then she says, a few months ago, my son had a medical appointment because of a concern the pediatrician had. One of our good friends who was a minister met us. As he was holding my son before the doctor saw us, he stroked my son's head. Why is his hair so greasy? He asked. Oh, I responded sort of sheepishly. It's Hohoba. I anointed him before we came. She says, if this sounds a little woohoo Jesus y to you, you're not alone. It sounds that way to me too. But I'm weary of feeling embarrassed about it. Science has shown us that infants who aren't touched fail to thrive. Perhaps as adults, our spirits fail to thrive too. When we aren't offered and aren't open to receiving the gift of healing touch. A woman reached out and touched Jesus' robe and was healed. Can touching your forehead with a little oil heal your affliction? I honestly don't know. What I know to be true, though, is that the power of resting a hand on a head and bearing witness to pain and suffering is in itself a movement towards wellness. It's not weird. It's not conservative Christianity. It's not faith healing. It's embracing our humanity, who we were made to be. The image on the screen, which is on your bulletin, will be accompanying us through this journey together. It is by David Rankin, and it is entitled Portals of Grace. I'm not sure if it is fair to say that this image and the title in particular whether it speaks to one brain or the other. I do think that the image reminds us of who we are because it places us in the web of life, in the middle of more connections than we can imagine. And whenever we stand in all the middle of all of those things we are connected to. I think then we are able to live as we are called to live, and that is as a portal or a vehicle for the energy and the power and the grace that flows through the whole of creation. And that is what today's biblical passages reinforce. We don't need to understand them so much as to get to what they're pointing to. Jesus was a portal for healing. In turn, the early Christian communities were instructed to serve as portals for healing. And as I spoke to the people who I've lined up to share their perspectives throughout this Lenten series, I heard them saying the same thing. Rebecca Miracle, who will join us next week, a traditional healer from Tyendinaga, said, 
I am medicine. Which is another way of saying, I am a portal for healing. Not what I think or what I know, but who I am. Dr. Margaret Trump will share with us that within the circles of modern medicine, which has a history of being fairly them and us, it's the doctors who understand healing. We don't bring anything to that conversation. But in fact, even within that tradition, there is emerging a different approach whereby doctors are now encouraged to understand themselves as portals with some good science behind them. But now recognizing that the healing comes out of the relationship and the understanding whereby the the person formerly known as the patient is also invited to be a portal for their own healing. I think that Jesus was remembered as someone who lived out of a very different understanding of relationship and power. It was not so much the kind of power that changed systems, but the kind of power that transformed people. And as David shared with us in the workshops he led yesterday, this is not booga wooga stuff. This is physics. And what the new physics is telling us is that the world is like that. And that the mystery that we call God is in all of those connections. And that we are invited to take our place in that company of heaven and earth and serve as portals of healing and grace. I've invited David to share a few words this morning about his own journey towards his self-understanding as a healer. How... Did I get from there to here? (laughs) Part two, the shortened version. How did I arrive at being a healer and also an artist and also a musician? Um, What were the requirements for doing it? And Lynn asked me this right right outright. Well, I was making scones. Um, What's the requirement to become a healer? And I thought it was there right in front of me, softening, a softening of myself, a softening that's really the growth of compassion for myself. And how that was implemented was by, it marks 30 years now exactly this month that I started full-time as an artist, working full-time, and doing thousands of paintings. And at first I thought, you know, I was being very left brain about it, very enlightenment. I am doing a historical reproduction from my roots, and I'm following this style. It's very historical, Book of Kells, blah, 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 like that. But the more I did it, the more that came to me, the more I realized what I was doing was creating portals, like portals of grace. Each piece was like a mandala, uh, an assembly of geometry that would allow me to enter deeper, not into other people or the world, but deeper within myself and start to peel back those layers of damage and those layers of misunderstanding and their self-perceptions that were not doing me much good at all and broadening everything. And pretty soon, the black and white of the world just started to dissolve, and everything just became shades of gray and more expression. There was more there to see the world with. And it also illustrated to me that, like the detailing in that painting, that everything was very interconnected. And what I was painting was not just a historical style, but uh, portraits of interconnectedness that worked as portals, and also portraits of um, the creation matrix. It's like I was painting physics. So this softening resulted, and all of a sudden, the healer 
revealed itself in me. It took some, some Reiki training, but most of it just came. And then I asked myself, well, how did it come so easily? Was it always there? But it was slowly developing. We're all creative beings. We're called to be creative beings. We are born as creators. We are the creator species. We're also born to heal. And it's through creativity that we heal. It's through self-expression and just being open, open heart, listening with an open heart, speaking with an open heart, and just being human. We're called to be human. We're called to be healers. We're called to be creators. All that creation did a good job. And it just has kept the flow, so it's all about the flow, too. And always be willing to learn. Thank you. <laughs>